Hey, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In this video, we're going to have a look at using shelving filters or shelf filters, shelf EQs, shelving EQs. Um, the terms EQ and filter often get used interchangeably, but the way that I like to think about it is that when you load up an EQ plugin, that plugin is going to be made up of one or more filters. And they could be shelving filters like we're looking at today, they could be parametric filters, they could be pass filters, and you could have multiple instances of each different filter type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the three filters here that aren't shelving filters. And this leaves us just with the shelving filters in our EQ plugin. We have a high shelf and a low shelf. And the high shelf is used to turn up or down the high end of the frequency spectrum. And the low shelf is used to turn up or down the low end of the frequency spectrum. Now, something that you might notice about shelving filters, which makes them a little bit different to other filter types, is that the gain change that you make occurs over what's known as a transition band. And then it remains constant all the way down to either the low end or the high end of the frequency spectrum. So whatever gain change you make, that's going to remain constant all the way to the top of the frequency spectrum if you're using a high shelf, and all the way down to the bottom of the frequency spectrum if you're using a low shelf. And because of that, shelving filters are really, really useful for making sort of broad tonal changes to your signals. So let's just set these back to zero, and then let's have a listen to how that sounds. So as you can hear there, if we turn the high end up, the signal gets brighter. If we turn the high end down, the signal gets more dull. If we turn the low end up, the signal gets more bass heavy. If we turn the low end down, the signal gets less bass heavy. And so shelving filters are really useful in creating these broad tonal changes in your signals. Now, your shelving filters are generally controlled using three parameters, and they're exactly the same for the high shelf and the low shelf. So let's take a look at the high shelf. So the first parameter to be aware of is the gain parameter, and this controls how much you either turn the high end up or down. And in the case of the low shelf, that would be how much you turn the low end up or down. Next is the frequency parameter. And in the case of a high shelf, this lets you set the point at which anything above this point is going to be turned up or down. Or in the case of the low shelf, anything below this point is going to be turned up or down. Now, your frequency setting could actually refer to one of three different points on this transition band. It could be what's known as the cutoff frequency, so that would be the point at which three decibels of gain change is achieved. It could be what's known as the center frequency, and that's the point right at the center of this transition band. Or it could be what's known as the corner frequency, and that's the point at which the full amount of gain change is achieved. Personally, that's not something that I worry about too much when I'm actually using a shelving filter. I just think of it more as anything above this point is going to be turned up or down in the case of the high shelf. Anything below this point is going to be turned up or down in the case of the low shelf. I just mention it so that if there is any reason that that does make a difference to you in the way that you work, then you know about it. And the final parameter that you'll usually have control over is one which controls the size of the transition band. So you're able to make the transition band slope more gradual or more steep. And which you choose will generally depend on what it is you're EQing and how you want that EQ to sound. Now there are some plugins that don't give you control over that transition band, over that slope. That's just fixed and the only thing you have control over is the gain and the frequency. There are also some plugins that don't give you control over the frequency either. So sometimes all you'll have control over is how much you're turning the high end or the low end up or down. But the frequency and the slope will be fixed. And so that's how to use a shelving filter. They're great for making things brighter or darker and making these broad tonal changes. And because of the way that they apply a constant amount of gain change all the way up to the top end or the bottom end of the frequency spectrum, they're great for making really natural sounding changes. So I hope this video helps. 
If you want to get a bit of a head start with EQ, then head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads and download my free PDF EQ cheat sheet. It contains all the frequencies that you need to know for drums, bass, guitars, vocals, and it's a really useful guide to have in your home studio. It also comes bundled with a free compression cheat sheet and a free vocal recording guide as well, which I think you'll find really useful. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you next time.